Hello, welcome to the land of Kekiak. My name is Laurel and I homeschool my three boys using the Robinson curriculum as the base of our education. Today I want to talk to you about how we do history. Okay, so we do history as a family subject. Um, our state requires uh, social studies from, and so I use history for social studies, from kindergarten like on. So um, there is, I think if you are a Robinson curriculum family, I think a lot of people what they're doing is they're just using the book list and whatever book comes up that they, that the category falls into history, they're just reporting that as their history curriculum. It is kind of sparse at the beginning. I felt more comfortable just doing, just keeping the book list as just for reading and like language arts stuff and just doing a separate history curriculum. Um, but I am going to, I'll go over that. I'm gonna give you three simple, uh, it's good to start from most simple maybe to most extra, the most RC plus. <laughs> okay, so the first option I have for you, and these are all things that we have done at certain times. So the first thing I have is to do, this is borrowing from Charlotte Mason, a book of centuries. And I actually created one and it's for free in my TPT store and I'll link it down below in case you're interested. So what I think for any type of curriculum, I always build off of some kind of spine. So I actually gave you one in here just in case you don't want to go looking for one. You're like, just give me something. I got to do something this week. So I do provide in this book of centuries a world history outline starting with prehistory like the archaeological record and creation and um, so you guys you can choose you know which way your family wants to study it or study you know being an anthropology major myself I definitely study the archaeological record with my kids and creation being Christian. So then I was on to early civilization, classical civilizations, post-classical, medieval era, and the Renaissance, Reformation, early modern era. So I, if you want to use that, you can. You can use any book, though, that you want for, um, like I have this one here that I own. It's um, a DK book. It's a Smithsonian history. It's super, super big. So uh, I'll link this down below. And I just, I'm, I just bought it used off of Amazon, but I use, it's just an awesome book. Like it definitely, um, has amazing like pictures and visuals for the kids. Pretty much anything that we are studying that's historical. We always go to this book. I always go back, you know, teach them how to use the index, go back, see if like when we were reading about King Alfred, I'm like, see if King Alfred's mentioned in there. He, he was, you know, a little bit, and so then we found it, we checked it out. So you can use something like this, you could use their table of contents, they have multiple timelines in here. Um, like, they break it down by region, like of the world, they have a timeline for, you know, Asia, for North and um, Central America, for Europe, they've got a lot of different ways they can break it down. So I think this is like a fabulous thing to own, or something similar. So you could have that on hand and then, you know, use your book of centuries and, you know, just go through. Um, and I've also listed for you because sometimes like in historians and books and stuff, they don't all call, maybe the same time period, but it could be called multiple things. So like um, early civilization. So I said that's about 8,000 to 700 BC, right? It's a huge amount of time. And I break it down by, you know, some regions of different cultures they could look into. And then there's like the classical civilization. Well, that would be um, from 700 BC to 600 AD. And then post-classical is also sometimes called medieval era or 600 to 1450 AD. And then the Renaissance and Reformation, also called the early modern era from 1450 to 1750 AD. So, um, then I've got age of exploration or early modern, age of revolutions, also early modern, but like a different time frame, and then the late modern age, 1914 to present. So, um, just because sometimes you're not sure if you're if you're looking at the right thing. 
sometimes you also hear the different time periods called the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, right? So I've got, I've made some useful tools for you here. If you want to look at those and the eras they fall into. And then I made like a pretty long list of the centuries um, for a little bit of help of how to fill this out. Okay, so I think I also included all the G.A. Henty books because we use those to, we insert those into our studies. Okay, my phone, uh, my phone died. <laughs> okay, so I was talking about uh, just doing a book of centuries. Um, and, you know, so you're just basing off of the outline, your outline, whatever it is, as your spine. And then you can just like go to the library and get armfuls of books um, on whatever period you're studying. You could just like follow, you could do a book of centuries just following the timelines in here. Um, so something like that you could use. Again, you could go pick out supplemental reading or documentaries or anything that you want to add in to that. So that would be option two. Option three would be to just go out and buy a history curriculum, <laughs> which is actually what we did. Uh, we settled on the good and the beautiful. I bought, I just went ahead and bought all four years because I know I'm going to use them. I just like to have what I know I'm going to use and not have to worry about being sold out or like the good and the beautiful is going to be like revamping their history. And since I liked it the way it was, I was like, what if I don't like it? And they've sold out of the current style. So I just went ahead and bought it. And if the other ones, if they revamp it and there's something worth looking into, I'll look into it then. But I'm, I'm happy with things the way that they are. So that would come with a main history book and a bunch of other supplemental stuff. But um, the history book is broken down into three units. So if it's perfectly with how I like to do... It's already broken up for me, so I don't have to worry about planning when to break from history and switch over to science, because we alternate. We do our three R's, and we alternate history and science um, units. So the first unit, unit one, was on ancient history, and um, so we just use this program. I love it. There's nothing else like it. I can do it. It's multi-level um, because they've got... You just pick the notebooking pages, right? So I've got a, a second grader and a sixth grader. So here, this is Will's for grades one through three. Here's uh, Everett's for grades four through six. And then, so it's just leveled for them. I don't have to think about anything. And then they just, we do our lesson and we do that like two, two or three times a week. Um, sometimes we have a catch up day where Sunday is just like two or three history lessons in one, one like go and like they really, really like it. Like they really enjoy this. So there, I, I don't do any testing. There's no history essays to write. This is purely for um, enrichment and enjoyment. And I mean, they'll get to heavier history requirements like in high school and stuff. Um, and then to add in our G.A. Henty reading, I found it was really better not to just read these as standalones but to have some background information already about the time and the place and the events because like, we had him read this one without reading any doing any history related to it beforehand and his reading comprehension on this was pretty low um maybe he was just too young but it's you know these are world these are all around the world encountering you know other cultures i mean and they're written from the writer himself, he's like British. So it's not an American point of view, right? It's already like a British point of view. Um, and they're, they're cute. I think he's trying to portray what the point of view would be of the characters, but they are like Europeans or not. Um, Americans, we have a very unique perspective, you know? So um, obviously influenced by the Europeans, but unique. So, um, yeah, I would find it be better to do a history unit, like to do our ancient history unit, and then have him pick a book from Henty to read and just insert it into his core RC book list. And um, if you are not an RC member, um, and you have, like, you can do this without being like an RC parent, right? Anyone can read Henty books and add those into their child's reading or base uh, or supplement their um history curriculum but you know 
the good and the beautiful came with the readers or I purchased you didn't have to buy them all but I did and so we had already read a book about um together as a family as um in the point of view of a young Egyptian boy in ancient Egypt and so we were able to just talk a lot and like do if any you know I I think it is really valuable to have that family reading time because when questions come up we can just figure it out we can look it up we watch documentaries on Egypt we you know had had got tons of books um, there's tons of books in the library Egypt is so fascinating there's a ton of like books out there for kids um, and so I think the, after having all that background information and questions answered then reading this makes a lot more sense you know and he has another story to go off of and um, you know different writers will have different maybe have different perspectives that come through in their writing so um yeah so then we picked this one from when we did the uh, medieval time frame um a knight of the white cross and then he did true to the old flag i'll show it to you so when we did our our third unit um was talking about early american history and so they talked about the revolution and independence and all that stuff and so after we did that unit and we had readers that we did together, he then read True to the Old Flag, which is written from the point of view of a loyalist. Um, whereas, you know, most of the things in America, this is our history, and so most of our books are written, you know, novels from the point of view of what, who we call the patriots, you know, or maybe who they call the rebels. <laughs> um, so it was interesting to get uh, a story uh, from a loyalist point of view, you know, where the rebels, the re the patriots are the bad guys, you know, it's kind of, it was an interesting mental uh, exercise. So you could do a book of centuries and you could, you know, insert those into that. You could pick a generalized um, history book um, and follow their timelines or their table of contents to build a history um, curriculum off of. And then of course, insert your historical novels or you could just go all out and just purchase a curriculum such as the good and the beautiful which i love and i'm so glad that i found i'm so glad they made it um and then just do these insert these into the book list i do have you know videos on how i structure their independent reading and i'll link one down below for you if you're interested in that but those are my uh history as my family subject or one of them and I hope it's helpful if you have any questions or comments leave them down below if you would like more family history videos or family subject videos give me a like so I know that this is like something people are interested in doing <music>